trials and tribulations and then walking with us through celebration. This is great. God is good. I'm happy to be here. Is everybody happy? God gave us another day, huh? Good morning, City of David. Good morning. Good morning. You know what that for us? Good morning means a brand new day and a brand new opportunity, a brand new chance to see God work. Good morning, City of David. Oh, God, we just thank you, God. We come this morning to, to say thank you, God. We don't take it for granted, Father. We, we, we recognize that you've been good to us, that your grace and your mercy have outran your wrath, that you didn't give us what we deserve, God, but you gave us grace, God, and, and, you, split, and you shed your mercy on us, God, and you kept us, God, and you kept us as we slept in woke us up this morning with the mind that said, let's go to church, Father. I'm still serving you, God. We don't, we don't take that for granted, Father. We just come to say thank you, God. We ask now, God, that you would do what you do. Be the God of our lives, God. Be the God in this service. Let your spirit reign. Restore, renew, Father. Reconcile. Save somebody, God. Let your word go forth, God. Open up our hearts. Open up our spirit. Give us knowledge and the and wisdom, but most of all, God, let your love run through this congregation, through this service, God. Let it be that we all see you, God, that we see you and not each other, God. Just be our God today. And we'll be so careful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you remain standing just for a minute, our scripture this morning is coming from the 25th division of Psalms, Psalms 25. And I'm going to break from my tradition and reading it in the message version. I'm going back old school. Sometimes the prose of King James matches how I heard it when I first heard it. And nothing sounds like King James sometimes. 25th Psalm, beginning at verse 1, reading through verse 10. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. For they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember me, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he will teach, will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. We thank God for the reading and the hearing of his word. Thank you. Thank you.
uh, reading and hearing that we might all be on one accord. Amen. Praise God. On Tuesday is Mama Barbara Powell's birthday. There she is in the sanctuary. We all praise God. Praise God for keeping on another year. Amen. Also on Tuesday is Brother Marquis Luther birthday. We want to say happy birthday, amen, and praise God and give God the glory. Uh, on Thursday is Sister Karen Evans' birthday. We want to say happy birthday to our good sister. And also, Mama May Nelson back there. It's her birthday. We want to say happy birthday, amen. Thank you, God. Blessings over all of their lives. Amen. And God may continue to do great things. Somebody say great things. Amen. Great things. And God might give the glory. Wednesday was not only Cupid's Valentine's Day, but it was also Ash Wednesday. The day that we start our journey to Calvary. The day we remember the sacrifice that he made over 2,000 years ago. And I know we live in an age where we are walking in unearned entitlement. Amen. But some of us are so excited that he thought fit to get on a cross for us. And he that was not seen got on a cross for a sinner. And I'm here to tell somebody right now he was on that cross for you. I don't care if you were a liar. I don't care if you were a murderer. I don't care if you're a fornicator or an adulterer or a blasphemer. I'm here to tell you, he got on that cross for you. Don't you let these church folk tell you different. He got on that cross for you, that you might have the tree of life. And you see when you come and when you get up in the morning, you ought to give him the glory and the honor and the praise. You see why even when you are in your car, you ought to be saying, thank you, God. I give you glory, God. I don't care what these people in this church get ready to do, but I'm going to come in here with thanksgiving in my heart and praise on my lips to give you the glory and the honor you all with me and the praise. But somebody, would anybody open up your mouth this morning and give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. And so we have sent you, you got no excuse, we sent you a daily a Bible lesson that you may study daily the Word of God. And I want us to come out of this season different. I don't want us doing the same thing. I don't want us giving up Twinkies and then on Easter Sunday eating a whole bunch of ding dongs. I want us to say, I'm coming out of this season different. And I mean it this year. I'm coming out of this season prepared to give God my very best. Because I want the very best. And if it's true that we reap what we sow, if I sow the very best, then I can expect to receive the very best. And if I don't sow the very best, I ought not, I'm going to talk back to me, church, I ought not act like I should get the very best from God. But I feel like I got an able spirit in this house. And some folks say, I'm going to give God my very best this year. It's more than just giving up Twinkies and Hobo. I'm giving God my very best. That not only I might receive the blessing, but watch this. Everybody connected to me may go on the other side. Amen? Amen. So let's read our word of God that we might be prepared to give God our very best. Daughters of Naomi and Ruth have a meeting today. The topics are love. And they are doing their spotlight voting. And so please see your uh, pages, your, your Facebook pages, and the leadership for more details. Men of David, we are meeting on tomorrow at 6.30 on Zoom. And so we will send out the link that we might be all one accord. And then finally, beloved, on next Sunday, we are celebrating our heritage. We are from the motherland. In fact, all of creation is from the motherland, amen? And so we're coming next week in that kind of attire and spirit that we might worship the God that not only was the God of Africa, but the God of God of today, amen? So we're coming next week in that attire to give God. But we've learned even uh, last week in our Super Bowl attire that our, our attire don't make our worship. Amen? And so we're coming 
to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Please uh, look at your e-blast because there's a lot of good information there that might keep you informed about what's going on in your community and in our church. I want you to know that March 5th is a very important day because it's our opportunity to exercise our vote. And I am, I don't know about you, but I am a little off put that they keep having to say it's hands that look like yours and mine that's going to determine the vote. Even if you read your Bible, your Bible suggests to us that we must, in accordance with Scripture, participate in governing authority. So it's God's command for us to participate in what's going on in our communities and cities. And so shouldn't nobody have to tell you to go and vote. And if you do go and vote, I'm not going to say well, you should be doing that. Amen. Amen. So that we can, yes. Tell me, ask you offline who you should vote for. Mm -hmm. I give you some advice. But you ought to be reading now so that you can go in the ballot booth yeah. and vote your conscience. Amen. Don't let what you hear on the ads and what you read in the paper be your sole source about what's good for you and for us. Yeah. Do your own research. Yeah. I was just study to show yourself approved. Yeah. Amen. That you might go into the ballot booth on March 5th and vote your conscience according to your God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we ask you uh, to get on board. We're now pressing our way to this altar, believing that God is able. I need you to know that you ought to be coming toward this altar with holy boldness. Everywhere your foot lands. Holy Ground. Yesterday, Sister Gray invited me and I went out to the Carson Community Center. I need you to know that I declare that that's Holy Ground. God spoke and used us and following the service, folks said, I want to come to the city of David. That I might be in the presence of the kind of God you all serve. And so if you believe that you are walking in that kind of authority, would you press your way to this altar believing that God is able? David says, one thing have I desired the Lord, that also will I seek after, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold of the beauty, to inquire of him in his temple. In a time of trouble, he provide for me a tabernacle. shall set me high on the hill, that my head shall be lifted above my head.
leave church or, or dismiss to go to you church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If there are other youth, uh, let's do better city. Amen. Amen. Praise God.
soul, my soul, my soul. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. All that I'm going through, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, get it right now. Get it right now. Get it right now. 
opportunity that you've given us one more time. And no matter what we're going through, God, still say yes. Yes, Lord. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, help me celebrate our God. Help me to celebrate our music ministry that has led us in worship these songbirds, these big lights on the instruments. We thank God. The Reverend Mark, we thank God for his faithfulness. We pray and we lift up Pastor Shirley right now and the Patton family. To our doorkeepers, we say thank you. For saying I'd rather be a doorkeeper in my father's house. To our greeters, we say thank you for greeting us with hospitality. And to our tech team that's allowing us to put forth this word, we say thank you. To Mama Hattie for keeping us safe up here. To all of you, my brothers and my sisters, we say thank you. Thank you for thinking it not robbery to press your way into the sanctuary to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We would apologize for how we carry on, but some of us came to worship. We came to worship, and we came to lift up his holy name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God to Trevenia Jacobs and Timmy Lavender. We say welcome to the city of David. You can be anywhere doing anything, but you thought of it not a robbery to come. Amen. And I see my sweet cousin all the way from Los Angeles. Amen. In the building. And so we want to give God the glory. Answer. My God, sister, we say thank you. Amen. Praise God. Come on, stand all over this house that we might go right to the word of God. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles with me in this season of Lent to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 14 to verse 20. Ezekiel. That's the book right before Daniel. Ezekiel. Amen. Chapter 11, 14 through 20. I'm reading from the message version. Your version may be different, but I declare the overall message is still the same. Here's what the word of God says. Ezekiel 11, 14 through 20. The answer from God came back. Son of man, your brothers. I mean, the whole people of Israel who are in exile with you are the people of whom the citizens of Jerusalem are saying, they're in the far country, far from God. This land has been given to us to own. Well, tell them this, this is your message from God, the master. True, I sent you to the far country and scattered you throughout the land. All the same, I provided you a temporary sanctuary in the countries where you've gone. I will gather you back from those countries and land where you have been scattered and give you back the land of Israel. You'll come back and clean house. Somebody say clean house. Throw out all the rotten images and obscure idols. I'll give you a new heart. Somebody say new heart. And I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll cut out your stone heart and replace it with a red-blooded, firm muscle heart. Then you'll obey my statutes and be careful to obey my commands. You'll be my people and I shall be your God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. For the brief moment that I have before you, before you get your mind on the greats and whatnot, I want to use for a somatic topic, it's turning around. It's turning around. Would you help me by looking at somebody and just declare it's turning around. I'm going to use your preacher voice, it's turning I know some of y'all got it. Church, 
there were a group of people that called themselves the Courtesy Club. I presume that their mission was to demonstrate hospitality towards those that attended church. Yes. And every Sunday right before the benediction, four elderly ladies of the Courtesy Club would depart the sanctuary in order to set up a table, Sister Constance, in the fellowship hall with coffee and donuts. Following the benediction, worship attendees would form a line in order to purchase a donut and or coffee for 25 cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In addition, one of these ladies eventually became the church announcement clerk. Bless her memory. However, mother would read the bulletin verbatim. She would conclude the announcements each Sunday the same way. Mother would declare that we had at our church the very best of everything. She said we had the best preaching, singing, discipleship, stewardship, and fellowship in Los Angeles, and the people, Reverend Mark, would clap. All right. However, I struggled with this weekly pronouncement because although mother was sharing what was on her heart, my definition of the best was very different. I did not see the best fellowship. I did not see the best discipleship. I heard some good singing but I didn't always hear the best preaching. <laughs> Younger people would say mother was in church capping. <laughs> in our text, I believe the prophet Ezekiel is faced with a similar predicament. You cannot read Ezekiel 11 without first starting in Ezekiel chapter 8. And so when you go home this week, I want you to read Ezekiel chapter 8 so that you can say, oh, that's what the pastor meant. But when you read chapter 8, you find out that Ezekiel was at home with some church folk when God showed him a vision. Ezekiel chapter 8 says that he was at home and God showed him a man and from the waist down it appeared that this man was on fire and from the waist up he had a very radiant glow. The Bible says that when Ezekiel saw this man, the spirit lifted him up and placed him to the gates of Jerusalem where God made a pronouncement to Ezekiel, go and look at what they had done uh, to the sanctuary. The Bible says that God said, Ezekiel, your mind is about to be blown by how the people are treating the house of God. And the Bible says in chapter 8 that Ezekiel walked in the church and the first thing he saw was an idol that provoked the jealousy of God. He saw them worshiping the astral pole. And the astral pole was the god of fertility. Why was this so detestable? It was detestable because he had already told them in Exodus 20 and 5 that I am a jealous god. I am the only god and I will curse the children of Paris down to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me. I have done so much for y'all and y'all are worshiping somebody that cannot do anything for you. Well, isn't that just like us in the church today? We come in God's house and we want everything to be quick, everything to wrap up. We don't want them to sing no B selection. We don't even want them to extend the A selection because we want to get outside the walls and worship everything but our 
God. And what made it also detestable is that when you read your Bible, you come to understand that Josiah had already 30 years prior chased out the astral pole in the temple, but yet they were worshiping that same God again. Well, isn't that just like us? We say, God, if you deliver us from this, I promise God I'll never do it again, God. If you get me away from that crew, I promise God I'll never go back to another crew like that. God, if you get me out of this situation, God, I will never get myself in that kind of situation. He had already chased out the false gods, but yet they were in the sanctuary worshiping a same false god. He said, Ezekiel, go even further and you're going to see more detestable things. And Ezekiel went further and he showed him a hole. He said, Ezekiel, get in the middle of the hole and watch what you see. Ezekiel got in the middle of the hole and he saw 70 elders in front of the sanctuary with a censer. And you recall, a censer was what they used in order to burn the incense. But he said, Ezekiel, these same elders are trying to get an incense burnt in the sanctuary, but they are doing all kind of detestable things outside the walls of the church. Oh my God. Isn't that just like the contemporary church where we try to throw around our title and we try to come dressed in white and we look down on everybody else because we want everybody to think that and we are so holy, but when we get outside of the walls, we do all kind of detestable things. And some of us don't even wait till Monday. We'll get outside of the church service that we just shouted at, and we'll cuss folk because they was too late getting in their car. We'll get on the we'll get on the corner and we'll talk about people. Come on, talk back to me. We say y'all coming to church and y'all standing there like a of fashion and it was 70 elders and I like how it said it was 70 elders because somebody needs to understand that same kind of stuff going on in the church today. I know that this younger generation we gotta pray for. I know this generation Z and this generation Alpha we gotta put, put our hands on and pray for them because they do and say some stuff strange stuff. Oh Lord, I know it. But I'm here to tell you, they are not the only reason we got all the foolishness in the church. This was 70 elders, folk that have been in the church for years, folk that should know better. And see, y'all sitting around talking about them young folk, but it's some of you seasoned folks that's keeping all the hell. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me up in hell. It's some of you seasoned folks keeping all the hell in the church. It's some of y'all carrying titles that you can't even cast out no devil. Because when folk get sick, you don't say, let me come over there and pray for you. You call and say, let me go find a pastor and let me go get Reverend Mark. But you better learn that when you flow with the Holy Spirit, you don't need no bishop. You don't need no pastor. You learn how to lay hands on yourself and declare what's possible with God. Can I talk to some real folk that know when the pastor Understand that you got to make sure your heart is pure. These elders was in the church house trying to act big, but their heart was dirty. Their hearts were filthy. And I'm here to tell somebody Solomon said it best in Proverbs 23 and 7. As a person thinks in their heart, then so are they. You can think evil if in your heart if you want to and you're going to find yourself evil you can think like a hater in your heart if you want to you will become a hater but I believe that God is raising up at the city of David some folk that want the righteousness of God I just believe that God he is raising up some folk at the city of David we're not perfect every now and then you got to pray for us but we 
are trying to press toward the mark. We are trying to give God the glory. We coming in here letting you know to pray for us so that we might give God the honor and the praise. And the Bible says, he said, Ezekiel, go even further because they like mother saying how good the church is, but the church ain't the church no more. He said, Ezekiel, go further and when Ezekiel went further he saw a woman at the door at the entrance gate and she was worship, worshiping the God of Tamas and the God of Tamas was the God they called on when they wanted the crops the harvest income for it. he said Ezekiel you got to go further and Ezekiel went further and he saw 25 more elders and were praying y'all that's a good thing and they were praying toward the east that's another good thing but they were not praying for toward the east and celebrating the s-o-m they were celebrating the s-u-m and god had already told them in deuteronomy 4 and 19 that when you look up in the sky and you see the sun and the moon and the stars don't you give the sun and the moon and the stars no praise. You give the one who created the sun and the moon and the stars. Y'all play with me, but we do the same thing. We praise the creation and we don't praise the creator. God bless you with the house and you'll brag about the house, but you won't brag about your God. God will bless you with a whip and you'll brag about the whip, but you won't brag about your God. God will even bless you with a
detestable stuff. But yet y'all claim to be the best church. Y'all claim to be a nation under God. Well, when you get to Ezekiel 9, I'm getting that 11, y'all. When you get to Ezekiel 9, God said, I got to send my judgment because I am a God that's only going to put up with foolishness only for so long. I got to send my judgment. And so when you read Ezekiel chapter 9, the Bible says he asked for six men to come and move through out the land and order to pass judgment over those who are walking contrary to God. Oh, that ought to be a warning call. See, you may have got away from some of us and you may have done some stuff outside of the pastor's eyes, but I'm here to tell you, he sits high, but he looks low. And his eyes are on the sparrow. You may have dragged my name indoors. I was not in but I tell you, you better be careful what you say about me. Because King Jesus is a listener. You better be careful how you drag my name in these COVID streets. Because King Jesus is listening and I am a child of his. And the Bible says that these six men, they came from the north. And he said, what had on crushed linen, cousin? And he had a kid on the side of him. And God told him, oh, this somebody shout. God told him to flow throughout the land. And people, I want you to mark. Because I am going to send my judgment that way. And when my judgment don't see mark people, they are going to be thrown dead in the streets. Some of y'all didn't shout. Well, can I give you your shout? Well, in Genesis 4, there was another instance where he put a mark. But that was only for a brother named Cain. And because he only declared that mark for Cain, I understand why some of y'all wouldn't shout. But when you read it, Ezekiel 9, it is more inclusive because he told him when he flew throughout the land, anybody he see that don't like what they doing because they understand it's contrary to scripture, anybody that is lamenting how we are being treated, put a mark on them because them are my people. Oh, that's my shout because it's more inclusive than Cain. Let me know that if I stand for what's right, that I am on God's side. If I stand for what is true, oh my God, I am on God's side. If I stand according to this word, I am on God's side. Can I talk to some people this morning that's going to leave today feeling like I got the mark on me. And so wherever I go, ain't no devil in hell going to be able to stop. Wherever I go, I'm going to be able to declare child of God. Wherever I go, I'm going to be able to declare that I am God's property. Can I talk to some real folk up in here that would open up your mouth and give God the glory because you got the mark. I got the mark of God. And so wherever I go, I'm going to declare I'm blessed when I go in and blessed when I come out. Would y'all open up your mouth? Would y'all open up your mouth? Would y'all open Somebody say, I got the mark. Look at somebody else say, you better get the mark. He said, when I send my judgment, everybody that has the mark, you gonna be all right. And so I'm telling you right now, if you leave this house and you got the mark, you gonna be all right. You gonna be all right. I don't care what the circumstances is, Sister Stephanie. You gonna be all right. I don't care what the situation might be. You gonna be all right. In fact. That's the only reason some of us came to church this morning so that we can get the mark. We didn't come here to play no game. We didn't come here to look at none of y'all. I came to get the mark. 
see the mark. I'm going to keep my punishment going. If I don't see the mark, he said, I'm going to kill everything in sight. And so the Bible says the glory of the Lord is left the sanctuary. Y'all claim to be the best this and the best that. God said, I don't want to be a part of none of that. Glory left the sanctuary. And so then when we get to chapter 11, the Bible says that God has been merciful. And God is a just God. And some of us, I, I, we, we, we learned this in Bible study today. I know we come to church and we shout about God don't change his mind. That's not in your Bible. That's not in your Bible. And you didn't celebrate this. That's not in your Bible. Genesis 2, he said they blessed. By Genesis 6, he says, I regret I even made it. That's God's ability to change his mind. But see, some of us need to celebrate that because it's a humbling situation. It's humbling because when we got things going on, right? Don't get too big for your preachers. Because God will shake you or pull the rug from under your feet. He'll pull a rug from under your feet. And the same people you looking down will be looking. But the inverse is true too. If you on the wrong side, you better understand God can change that situation. He can turn that situation around. He can take you from the guttermost to the uttermost. He can take you from the valley to the top of the mountain. God can change his mind. And so when we get to chapter 11, watch this. It's some cheerful trying to brag about other church folk going through a rough time. Read scripture. Read scripture. Now understand, uh, when they did wrong, some people, they don't even know what they don't know. See, some of us brag like we all that, and we don't even understand that God is just using us in position temporarily until he shifts some stuff around. Watch this, watch this. They were bragging about the fact that God allowed for them to remain in the holy city, the city of David, and in the sanctuary. And they were bragging that God allowed for them to remain there when he kicked the others out to Babylon. Right? So because he kicked us out, you know us, he kicked us out, y'all think y'all better than us. Because you know two verses and I only know one, you think you're better than me. Right? And, and what they didn't understand is that when God, God told them, he said, y'all going to do so much wrong that I'm going to allow the Babylonians to come and take over. Now, I'm going to exile many of y'all, but I'm going to keep a few of y'all remaining so that y'all can be in servitude to the Babylonians. So y'all trying to brag, thinking y'all better than us, only because y'all were allowed to stay back and be slaves. You think you all that because you sit on the front row and I sit on the back row. You get chapter 11, that's what's going on there. They bragging because they still there. And they talking slick about those who've been exiled. But then God corrects them and God gives them the testimony of many of us. God said they went out, but what they found out is that I'm not just a God of this sanctuary, I'm a God of every sanctuary. They went out in foreign land and they found out I'm a, I'm a company keeper. Anybody know that people dragged you out, but you found out that God, he's a midnight rider? Anybody know that they left you for dead, but now you are here to give God the glory because you know how far God has brought you from? Am I talking to anybody that was in the hospital room and the church folk didn't show up, but God showed up and made a way? Am I talking to anybody that's been on the dead end job and God was the real HNIC on that job. Would y'all open up your 
midnight hour. And I need you to know that a time, and just because I am a God that kept them while they were in exile, I am a God that is seeing now, I am turning the situation around. I am getting ready to take you from where you are to where I will have you to go. And I stopped by this morning to tell somebody that got the mark, you might as well get on the edge of your seat because God is getting ready to turn that situation around. God is getting ready to elevate you and God is getting ready to put you in a position so that you can know it was nobody but God. And that's why it's scaring you. That's why it's scaring you to bust a move. That's why it's scaring you to walk through the door because you can't see how it's going to happen and you can't see why it's going to happen. But I'm here to tell you, you're the one God want to use. You're the one God want to use so that he can tell the city and tell Jerusalem that I am the same God. I am the same God that did it for your grandmama and them. I am the same God that's getting ready to do it for you. Can I get one or two of you to connect with me in the spirit and believe like you getting ready to go to the next level? You are getting ready to do some stuff you've never done before. And you get ready to see some stuff you've never seen before. And you get ready to hear some stuff you've never heard from, from before. Come on, city. Let's worship God. We are getting ready to climb higher mountains. We are getting ready to climb higher ladders. Can y'all open up your mouth this morning and give God the glory? And if you don't need nothing, I understand why you sitting there like a bump on the log. But if you know you need God to do something and you know only God can do it, would you open up your mouth? 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 Would you open up your mouth and give God the glory? Sometimes you, sometimes 
me. Always us. God is able. Can I pray that when God sends the 2024 Ezekiel, he don't see the city of David behaving like the Israelites. Looking down at people, worshiping creation and not the creator, and not speaking truth to power. But I declare if we do what God is telling us to do, he's going to bless us.
you may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. All in, all in. All in. That's a new member. Amen. Praise God. That's our newest member right there. That we can bring the glory and the honor. Just turn it around. Amen. Amen. Now that we have heard from God, we can get back a portion of that. Thank God. And so if you would raise your hands that our ushers may serve you with an envelope or a prayer request form. We pray here seven days a week here at the City of David. Amen. You may give your offering as you exit the sanctuary by placing it in the offering box. I'm asking that the prayer warriors stay back that you might also collect the prayer request form. Amen. I'm asking online if you would mail a check to P.O. Box 485, Gardena, California, 90248. You may use Givelify. Choose that church and that logo. Give whatever denomination God is telling you to give. Choose Cash App, Dollar Sign, City of David, 2017. And you may choose Venmo at City of David, 2017. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're getting ready to exit the sanctuary. Amen. Asking that you might come next Sunday, Family and Friends Day, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Come on, let's stand all over this house. Please clean up after yourselves. Anything nears you, please pick up that was not there before you sat down. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God, be above us to cover us, under us to sustain us. In front of us to lead us, behind us to protect us, alongside to comfort us, in us to love us. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless with exceeding joy. To the only wise and true God we know, glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and forevermore, let us say all together, amen. 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 Love you. Have a wonderful day.